again I, this is a privilege again he has given me to serve him he would have chosen so many people out there to speak to people but today he chose me and for that I give him all the honor and the glory my names are Pastor Barbara Kayongo for those who do not know me and I'm under the leadership of Bishop Robert Kayongo hallelujah in Revival Power Ministries here in Los Angeles in the city of California. It's a beautiful Sunday and we are here to worship and glorify God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we want to thank God for all that have been on during the, uh, the leadership time, the leadership session. Hallelujah. We've been blessed by Bishop Robert. Hallelujah. Amen. Water, for those who miss this, if you want to be a leader, please don't miss. Check out and come and log on at 8 
at 9 30 hallelujah and join us you'll be blessed as a leader you'll be blessed this only does not help you as a leader in church but it also lead, helps you to lead out there at your place of work you're praying to god to give you promotion you're going to get leadership uh, promotions and they are going to promote you to lead other people but if you do not know how to lead people in church you won't be able also to be able to lead other people but if you take the principles of the holy spirit hallelujah Amen. you'll be able to lead anywhere you ever go hallelujah so i encourage you to come and join all the time hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. glory be to god hallelujah. today i'm going to speak about secluded for a great comeback all right. hallelujah and we are going to read in the book of daniel chapter four i don't know if you bishop you're going to read for me bishop robert kayongo uh, oh, I might read myself. So it's going to be in, I can't tell Bishop Robert. Brenda, if you can, but if you can't, it's okay. In the book of Daniel, we are going to read chapter 4, starting from verses, I'll read, it's okay. From verses 27 to 37. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, you good? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Amen. If it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. Mm -hmm. King James Version. Yes. <clears throat> and verse uh, I'm sorry, verse 27. You said yes. From 27 okay. to 37. Verse 28. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Verse 29. At the end of 12 months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Verse 30, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Verse 31, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. Verse 32, and they shall drive thee from men, Amen. and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he willeth. Verse 33, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men. And he eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. Verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, or say unto him, What doest thou? Verse 36. And at the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, mm -hmm. and excellent majesty was added unto me. Mm -hmm. 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. Hallelujah. This is a great bishop. This is a great uh, king uh, whom we all knew about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we read, uh, before you go to chapter 4, and when you read the previous 
verses, mm. you're going to understand that this king Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. They were disturbing dreams that he did not understand what they meant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he gets counsel and he asks for those, his counsel, the wise men to come yes. and speak to him and try to be able to interpret the dreams. But none of them could do that. Hallelujah. Amen. Until I think it was his wife who told him about there is someone that I know by the name of Daniel. Hallelujah. Amen. And this man was brought before God. Hallelujah. Before the king. Hallelujah. Amen. And when they brought him before the king, he was able to speak to them. And he was able to speak to the king. And when he heard what the king had dreamt, this is where we start from verse 27. He started to interpret the dream. He started to interpret the dream for him from verse 21. Hallelujah. From Amen. verse 18. But 27, Jesus. after he knew that what was going to happen was not going to be good, he tried to warn the king. Hallelujah. Yeah. He tried to tell him, therefore, O king, that was verse chapter two. We are in, in Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. He tried to warn him and told him, Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous. Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus. And your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Hallelujah. Yeah. But because of his pride, yeah. King Nebuchadnezzar could not listen. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I want before that I want you to understand this was a king that had been chosen by God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. God had chosen him before even he ever got to understand to get an intimate relationship with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar knew about this God, but he was not intimate with him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When we read the scriptures, hallelujah, in Jeremiah chapter 27, verses 6 to 8, hallelujah. Mm. And now this is what the Lord says. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. Mm. Hallelujah. Wow. Who is speaking? This is God. Yeah. Yeah. He said, my Lord. And the beasts of the field have also given him to serve him. Mm. So all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the time of the land comes. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So that hallelujah. tells me that God had chosen this arrogant, hallelujah, Amen. prideful king. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. But because he had chosen him, uh, many people actually doubted. Maybe they were doubted like some of us. People may doubt whether God has called you. Uh, because of the nature how you, you act. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But God is telling me before we go to the book of Daniel, he's letting tell the, uh, uh, the prophet Jeremiah mm -hmm. that Nebuchadnezzar I have chosen. He's my servant. Yes. He's going to fulfill the purpose of him, what I want him to do. Yes. I know he's arrogant. Yes. I know he has the pride. Uh -huh. I'm going to do it. And I love the way the bishop talked about it. That we as followers, it is not our place to judge our leaders. Yeah. It is not our place to correct them. It is not our place to rebuke them. I cannot rebuke the bishop. Hallelujah. I have to pray for him. Yeah. Because the God knew this man, the time was going to come that he was going to humble him himself. Uh, yes. He didn't want the Jeremiah to do the job for him, though he was a prophet sent by God. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I, I wanted you to just know that, that this king was called by God as his servant. Amen. And before we go on through all this, and before we go in the depth of the word, I wanted you to understand what the word seclusion means. Mm. Hallelujah. Seclusion is a state of being private and away from other people. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a place where, where, it's a place where you're not seen or visited by many people. Hallelujah. Amen. You're sheltered and you're in private. Hallelujah. Amen. So this, now when we go through this time of lockdown, we are isolated. Come on. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Humans, we are known to be social creatures. Yeah. So when you put a lockdown and isolate us, we are going to have problems. Uh -huh. Because we are social what? Creatures, hallelujah. Amen. And we act very negatively when we are, are locked down. Yeah. We cannot handle isolation. Amen. Because it is isolating us from people we know. It's isolating us from our friends. We are not able to visit. We are not able to talk to our friends. Yes, I can talk to you on the phone. Yes, I can talk to you too online. But it's different. Yeah. I need one-on-one yeah. -on -one when I can see you, when I can visit you, when we can share the way we used to do. But now we cannot do it. Amen. I'm not surprised the way people are acting. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you, your, your brain is not stimulated, 
created, you begin to see things even that do not exist. Amen. Now people are going to confuse hallucination with the voice of God oh. because we are isolated. Yes, that's good. Hallelujah. Mm. People are going to have dreams. Thank God if you have a family at home that you have somebody you talk to. But people who are by themselves in the houses uh -huh. are losing it. Mm. Telephone is not enough. Facebook is not enough. Zoom is not enough. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So they are losing their what? Yeah. They are losing their mind. Yeah. Loneliness can damage both your mental and physical health. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not surprised that people are on the streets putting a demand on our mayors, on our governors, that you want the lockdown to end. They are going crazy. Yeah. Why? We are social beings. Amen. We are solitary from the people we love. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And when I hear that people at home are fighting, my husband and wife, they are fighting, they cannot stand each other. That means that was not even your friend in the first place. Wow. You should not be fighting. You should be celebrating, Said, Lord, we thank you. We are finally Lord, here together. Lord. But instead, what is happening now, people are fighting. They cannot stand each other. Why? They have been isolated from their norm. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And that isolation is affecting them. Yes. People yes. are going to get sick. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not from COVID. Uh -huh. People are going to get panic attacks. Yes. People are going to get depressed. Yes. People are getting anxiety attacks. Uh -huh. Before even cor coronavirus hits you, uh -huh. people are getting sick. Yes. Because we are isolated. And being that we are humans, we are social beings. Yes. Now, here we come to a man. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on, man. The king who was walking around his palaces, talking of how great he was, yes, how his yes. kingdom was. People were coming to him. People were speaking about him. All kingdoms around him knew about him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, this is something that happens. He did not understand that God had chosen him to fulfill a purpose. Yeah. His arrogance was taking on, thinking because he was great, he had uh, built this great Babylon. Uh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us, we are, we are. Mm. My first point is going to be, in seclusion, God wants us to honor, worship, and serve him with our hearts, but not lips. Mm. Wow. That is why we are here where we are today. Hallelujah. God wants us to honor him, to worship him, uh -huh. to serve him with our hearts, but not with our lips. Hallelujah. We have lost the instance of why we come to church. Amen. People we are coming, we are all coming to church with different motives. Uh. Hallelujah. Church was becoming something whereby we meet. It's a social a social joint. Yes. Hallelujah. Because after it, we are going to go out with our friends and have and have fun. Fun enough. Most of the time, we don't even discuss about what was preached in church. When we go out after church, Hallelujah. After great service, we talk about different things. Hallelujah. We enjoy our lunch. Hallelujah. Some of the people we come in because we are somebody else forced us to come, like my children. I guess for my son Isaac. They don't understand why we have to go to church every day. Yeah. But at this age, at the time where they are at, we are telling them, if you don't go to church, you're not going to stay in my home. you got to put on your clothes, go take a shower, we are getting ready for church. Amen. And that is how some of us, somebody else is forcing us. Some of us are coming to church because we grew up with our parents yeah. who taught us to go to church every Sunday. Yeah. Even if they might not be here on earth alive, or if they are not here where we are, at least we are saying, if my mom hears that I go to church, it will please her. Yeah. So you come to church because it's going to please your parents. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Some of us have been coming to church to escape home. Yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't like to stay home. <laughs> I don't like my wife. I don't like my husband. Thank God he doesn't go to church. Thank God she doesn't go to church. So my only escape out is just some Sunday service. Oh Hallelujah. But we're not coming here to worship God. Hallelujah. Yes. And the word of God tells me in Matthew chapter 15 verse 8 to 9. Matthew chapter 15 verses 8 to 9. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me and in vain they worship me. Teach 
teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the same word that you spoke about in Isaiah 29 verse 13. Therefore for the Lord he said, in such as these people, in, in as much as these people draw near with their mouth, hallelujah, wow. and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. Yeah. We are teaching people how to fear God. Yeah. And they are responding to that. We are teaching people you have to come to church on Sunday. And they are responding to that. They are coming with their lips, but they are not coming to church in the presence of God with their hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And God is fed up. Yeah. He's fed up. He's going to use whatever because every living thing on earth belongs to him. He has the power to control. Yes. Yeah. So the best way he was going to deal with the church mm. was to bring the coronavirus. Jesus. Because he knew if it spreads like that, mm. because the Ebola did not close down churches. Mm. HIV did not cause to call churches to close down. Yeah. But even then we do not understand that God is trying to tell us something. Mm. The churches were kept what? Open until coronavirus hit. Mm. The churches did what? Amen. The churches were closed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is what the Spirit was telling me. That in order for the church to be put in order, the temple has to be cleansed first. There is a difference between the house of God and the temple of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is where we don't understand. There is a difference between the temple. This place you see here, this is not where the where God dwells. Amen. He does not dwell in the four corners of this room. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you're coming, this is let me tell you the difference. The house of God, the, the temple, let me begin with the temple. Prior to Jesus Christ coming to our earth, people were going to the temple. To listen, to hear what God had to do, to say, hallelujah. They are waiting on the priest to tell them what the Lord had told them. Yes. The covenant and the, the, the presence of God was locked in an ark. And this ark, everywhere they took it, that's where the presence of God was. Yes. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross, oh. that day the Bible tells me that the veils of the temple were torn. Why? It symbolized that he had taken away that. He gave me you and everybody else access into his presence. Yes. yes. He gave me the authority to become the temple. Yes. At that moment, he began to say, if I dwell in you and you dwell in me, hallelujah, if you abide in me and I abide in you, hallelujah, that means that his presence is going to sit in me, not in the house of God. The house of God is put there so that believers can come together. When you come in empty, there's not going to be presence of God in the house of God. When you come in filled, when you come in cleaned, when you come in cleansed, when you come in holy, when you come in righteous, when you come in forgiven, yes, yes, you come amen. with the presence of God Hallelujah. in the house of God. Amen. That is why sometimes you can walk in church and say there is no power, Lord. but did you bring some with you? Ooh. It is your responsibility. You are the temple. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the what? Yeah. So if you're coming in the presence of God, when you come back to church by believers, you have to make sure this is the time God wants to work on us, to work on the temple. Yes. He didn't want rubbish. There's been a lot of rubbish in church. Amen. A lot of rubbish. Amen. Hallelujah. From the pulpit. Hallelujah. Yes. Now I'm going to speak to the leaders. We the leaders, the pastors, the great mighty men and women of God. There's been a lot of mess in the house of God. Yes. The place that we call that God dwells. God cannot dwell in that place. No wonder he cannot dwell in this house. He dwells in you. Uh, uh, glory to God. Pastors are having children with the members of the church. And followers we are still believing that that is a man of God. Woo. Yes. And the church is opened every day. Amen. There is still homosexuality being practiced yes. by those on top. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is those that are committing. This is a total mess. In the physical, Jesus demonstrated cleansing the temple. Yes. When he came and found that they were gambling and selling things, he beat them up. Mm. Right now, he's not going to 
will come and beat you physically. But he has to clean his house. Amen. The house of God has to go back in order. But he has to work with us when we are in seclusion. He knows if I'm next to Brenda, and I'm next to Sarah, and I'm next to Emily, and I come to church, I'm not going to have time by myself for God to deal with me. At this moment of our life, God wants to deal with this individually. Yes, yes, amen. He knew he was not going to handle Nebuchadnezzar in the palace. Yes. He needed to, se to, to, to separate him and isolate him from his power. From the people who praise him. Yes. Pastor, God is doing this so that he can get away. You can, he gets away the people who praise you. Ah. So that he can put you in a corner and deal with you. Yes. Because you're called of him. Ah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So instead of us all oh, worried, oh my God, the church has closed, we are broke and all that. No, take this opportunity to say, this is the time God wants to clean me and deal with me as an individual. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah, huh? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We are not teaching people to love God. Jesus. And you cannot teach anybody to love God. It is the Holy Spirit yes. that is going to teach you how to worship, hallelujah, how to worship him with your heart but not lips. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he has driven us out of his house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As he drove King Nebuchadnezzar out of what? Out of the palace. palace. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, Many people today are missing church because, not because they miss the word. Uh -huh. No. No, everybody says, oh, our churches are closed. No, the, many people are missing church because it was an escape for them. Jesus. Oh, I must say, Lord. Even if you pray, I know we are all praying for the COVID to end, but until he has cleansed each individual, uh, especially his leaders, especially his servants, those who are called to lead people in the kingdom. Jesus. To whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. Bishop was telling us this morning, there is a way you cannot live. You, you, the standard of the, when, you, when, when you accept Jesus and you become a leader, there are standards you have to meet. You cannot act as if you are a follower. There is a difference between a leader and a follower. I have to be able to identify that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I always don't have... Good sermons. When God gives me to speak, it's always like I'm filled with this fire that burns within me. Sorry, just to, to just to, to, and sometimes even I don't know how to bring it out. I feel it is so much that I don't even know how to bring it. But God is wants to use us during this time of isolation. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm telling you, if we do not return to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Some of us have been given a chance. There are those that have died that God has not been able to give a chance. But we are being given a chance. Let us take it now. Yes. Because the next strike, is no, you're not going to survive it. Yes. Amen. The next strike, you're not going to survive it. I'm telling you. Jesus. This is the time he has given us. The churches are closed. Yes, the house of God is closed. Why? It needs to be cleansed. The temple needs to be dealt with. When you're home and he deals with you, when you're home and he speaks with you, and you let the Holy Spirit work in your life, when you return, there's going to be the, the massive presence of the presence of God in his house. Jesus. Amen. Amen. But because of our unrighteousness and our filthiness, there's no presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's move to point number two. Why are you in a seclusion? Hallelujah. Yeah. Learn to adapt to the, your environment and surroundings. Uh, yes. Learn to do what? To adapt and yeah. to your environment and surroundings. Hallelujah. Yeah. Learn to make sense of the times we are in now and your surrounding. Hallelujah. Ne King Nebuchadnezzar was not born in the wilderness. Yes. Hallelujah. He was pulled from the palace where everything was brought to him. But now he has to learn how to deal to live in the wilderness. The Bible tells me he learned how to eat grass. Yes, he did. Probably was not even eating salad. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe he introduced us to 
to sell it. That grass has some pepper somewhere, somewhere. Because, <laughs> hallelujah, the Bible tells me he went in the desert, in the wilderness, and began to eat salad. Yes. Hallelujah. He began to eat the green grass. Hallelujah. But before they were bringing him all the fish, all the meat, all food that he could not even finish, it was at his table. Hallelujah. Yeah. But this time he's testing and said, oh no, this leaf is bitter. I cannot eat that. Oh, this tastes good. I can deal with that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Learn how to adapt to your surrounding and know what's going on. Use these times. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Learn about your children. There are many things I didn't know about my children because of our busy schedules. They are always going to school. We had a schedule. Hallelujah. Morning, wake up, get them ready, go to school, wake up and let's go. When we drop them off, go to work, from work, pick them up, come home, do homework, go to take shower, take dinner, bed, we sleep. Well, it's the same old routine. But there are so many things I had not discovered about them. Mm. I thank God. Hallelujah. That I married my best friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this mess and, the, and total nonsense that is taking place as husband and wife have been, me and my husband, we are getting closer. Jesus. Amen. I, I'm getting closer with my family, my children. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. It yes. will surprise you Hallelujah. that we have, <laughs> that my husband is a bishop. Let me tell you something. But we never had the altar that brought all of us in the house, hallelujah, together to pray. We prayed with our children, hallelujah. Every time our altar was in our bedroom, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But now we have moved our altar from the bedroom to the living room because now everybody is home, hallelujah. We are praying now with everybody. I never knew Prosy had a word. It took me by surprise. Wow. I never knew the floor can speak. Oh. I never knew that Sarah, I knew she was praying, I knew because I could see her spending all the time praying. She goes out in the garage by herself, locks herself up, listens to music and prays. But I never knew that she can open up a scripture and give it to us and preach to us. Okay. Yeah. Maybe she would have never done that. Maybe she would have even got married before me discovering that. Mm. But the Lord has brought this time Hallelujah. to get to discover each person's gift. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm encouraging those who are driving each other crazy. Stop your nonsense and get to know that person whom you're driving crazy. Uh, amen. Pray. Pray them through. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray them what? Pray through. through. Point number three. You have to learn to survive on what is available. In seclusion, you do what? You learn how to survive on what is available. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar was not there in the wilderness asking for the meat. He learned to use what was available for him. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me he grew hair on his body as if he was an eagle. That warmed him. Yeah. Hallelujah. He, when he couldn't get so cold. That gave some warmth to him. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And protected his skin somehow. Jesus. Hallelujah. So we have to learn how to depend on what is available. Yeah. Now I know some women are saying, for us, we know in Africa they are giving out posho, hallelujah. They are giving out, even here in the United States, they are feeding the children, hallelujah. And those who do not know, do not let your children starve at home. There is help, hallelujah. Amen. There is help everywhere, there is help. They are feeding the children. They are feeding those who are above 65. If you don't have food, they are there, they are going to feed you. Hallelujah. At least we get two meals a day for the kids, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But they are now, for those who don't, the government are giving out food like also to, to the people in Africa. They are giving them posture. They are giving them beans. Hallelujah. That might not be your favorite food, but appreciate. Instead of you quarreling online, telling us they didn't give you charcoal to cook the food. Figure it out. Hallelujah. Figure it out how you're going to get the firewood. There was that we learned in, in history when we were young, in, I think third grade, about the stone age. Jesus. They didn't have charcoal. Stone air, they didn't have electricity. Amen. They had stones, make fire out of stones and make your meals and appreciate the portion and the beans that give, they are giving you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then their wives are telling their husband, I want meat. I don't want to eat. You are going to eat the beans. The man does not work no more. Eat the beans and appreciate him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Eat the beans and appreciate the beans you're eating. Hallelujah. I was not looking in the camera. Hallelujah. <laughs> Eat the beans you are given. 
Hallelujah. Amen. This is not the time to ask your husband for a new dress online to order it. Where are the dresses that you already have and the shirts you have? This is not the time to order things. Oh, I want money. I want to order a dress. No. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have been putting up perfume for $1,000, don't ask for it. Go and get some lemon. Hallelujah. Yeah. Put some spices in up and put some perfume in. That is perfume for you. These are the times. Learn to deal, deal with what you have. Amen. 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 We have to survive this together. Yes. Amen. Nobody knows when it's going to end. Amen. We are predicting, but it's in the hands of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in order for you to survive, because many people are waiting for the speech of our president in Uganda on Tuesday. They are waiting to see if he's going to say now open up the business and now go back. What if he says no? Mm. Are you going to bury your wife in the house because you can't stand her? The husbands who, who are telling the wives, I don't like this food I'm eating. Your food does not taste good because your use of eating outside before you come back. You eat the food. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Eat the food that is available for you and appreciate. Start to appreciate the food your wife is cooking. Start to appreciate the hard work your husband is putting in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory be to God. Nebuchadnezzar understood that he was no longer in the palace. Yes. He understood that he was in the, in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Amen. Point number four. During this time of seclusion, try to acquire some skills and be wise. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know when prisoners are put and thrown in jail, this is what happens. The first day they walk in, they have an attitude about the food they give them. The food does not taste good. Hallelujah. But as they go, they learn how even they appreciate the taste of that food. Hallelujah. They appreciate the taste of that food. So they are able to eat it. Hallelujah. Yes. So at this particular moment, when they start getting used, they start to discover, they tell them their classes are available. Mm. You can learn how to mop. You can learn how to, to, to work with, with tools. You can learn how to sew. You can, they teach different skills. So you know what? They say, those who are wise, take advantage of it. Amen. I said, let me take advantage of this time. And they sit down and begin to learn. There is computer classes. Some go to the prisons of the United States, not in Africa. Yeah. Hallelujah. If they put it, you can learn computer. Yeah. There is church. You can learn the Bible. Even there, there is Bible school. I've seen preachers, people walking out of jail and coming out and become pastors. Mm. And they say that I was preached to in jail. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. They take skills. They learn some skills. Now, instead of you whining, hallelujah, learn some skills. Some women didn't know how to cook. You are depending on your housemate. Learn how to cook now. Got your housemate who cooks better than you. Sit with her. Pretend and say, no, today I'm going to help you. Amen. Sit with her and learn how to cook. Amen. Learn how to be clean. Some women don't know how to clean their houses and the houses are so dirty. You don't even know how to clean your clothes, your children. Learn. This is your time. Are there any skills? I was speaking to my girls in the house. They have skills. Hallelujah. Amen. I was telling them now you have to discover. You got to do something about your voice. You got to do something about you. you you're, you're very funny. I was encouraging them to do skit and uh, watch out. We are coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I was telling them, do skits. Hallelujah. You're talented. Do something. So that when you walk out of this lockdown, there is yes. something different about yes. you. Amen. Amen. Don't just sit and say, oh, I'm getting fat. Some of us have gained weight. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All we do is eat, sleep. Nothing. You don't think of anything else. Mm. Try to do something. Hallelujah. Amen. Learn about electronics. I don't know how to do this, but I'm discovering the technology. Yeah. I'm getting comfortable now with technology. Hallelujah. 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 I'm teaching myself things. Hallelujah. I'm teaching myself songs. Hallelujah. Ask my husband. Yeah. I composed a song during coronavirus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have that skill, but I, you know what? In the presence of God, I was worshiping. And he gave me a song. Hallelujah. Where was I going to get that time with my busy schedule? Yeah. Hallelujah. So learn some skills, hallelujah. Amen. And I want you to be wise. Amen. Amen. Bishop Kayamba was teaching us last week about the, the ten virgins. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. God brought this revelation and I want to share it with you. These ten virgins, they were all virgins in the first place. Yeah. Mm. Just as we are all called. Mm. These ten virgins, they all had the lamps. Mm. 
Yes. And all the ten had some oil in the what? Yeah. And all they were invited to the wedding. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. But the difference came here. While they were all marching, going to the place where they're invited, yeah. some said, I don't know when the groom is going to come. I better take some extra yeah. oil with me. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not so sure if the groom is going to be on time. <laughs> but I don't care whether he's on time or not. I'm going to take my oil. If I run out, I will refill. If I run out, I will refill. And some of them just went, oh, we've been invited. He's going to show up. Yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. So when they got there, he delayed. Uh -huh. And when he delayed, <laughs> and they slept and they woke up, they figured that their light was not as bright as the other people. It's going to run out. And they were begging for the oil. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And that's where Christians, we come in. We beg. Yeah. We want to beg when we are all given the same opportunities. Come on. Come on. Same opportunities. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, oh, okay. Can you give us? And I, I thank God for those wise ones. They said, no, we are not giving. You go buy your own. Mm -hmm. As they went to buy their own, they uh, found the doors closed. Uh, uh, Hallelujah. Jesus. During this COVID, nobody knows how long it's going to take. Come on. Nobody knows when it's going to stop. Good they way. might open for two weeks and lock us up again for a year. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But why? virgins yeah. took some extra oil with them. Oh, Where is your oil? Your oil is your seed. Your oil is your sacrifice. Because let me tell you, I know you're going to say, Pastor, I planted the seed in April. The grace of April is gone. You need a new grace for me. You don't know how long May is going to take. You don't know how long it's going to take. Have extra oil. Give your sacrifice. And the Lord is going to give you the grace to go through the sacrifice is your oil. The yes. seed you're going to plant is your oil. Yes. We need the grace from me. Who knows? You'll be the next victim. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Be the white virgins. Yes. So that's when the COVID is done. Hallelujah. 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 That when the COVID is done, the doors are not going to be shut on you. Yes. Blessings are going to pour in. Hallelujah. Because during when there was need, you were the one who said, I'm sacrificing. You are the one who was giving. Yes. Man. yes, yes. Our giving at this moment is our extra yes. oil we are carrying with us. Amen. There is nothing else we can carry. Ooh. There is nothing. We are waiting for our day when this is going to go over. Yes. But what do you have with you? We all have the lamps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all have the what? Yes. But what you're going to do, <laughs> you're going to have extra oil. Yeah. You're going to put, because you say, maybe May they want to open us again. Yeah. I better do something for God to save me. I better give a sacrifice. Oh, I yeah. better give my seed. Because I don't know how long May will take. I don't know if I go to my next patient, I'll contract the virus. Jesus, man. Thank you. Man. Be wise. Yeah. Be what? Wise. Bye. Be wise and do what the Lord wants you to do. Yeah. I'm going to ask you. Hallelujah. Mm. You're going to plant your seed. Jeez. And I want you to call it the wise virgin. Woo. Whether you're a man or woman, call it I am the wise virgin. The seed of wise virgins. Jesus, so that God will sustain you through this calamity. Hallelujah. Jeez. Hallelujah. Jeez. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to call in. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I don't want anybody to miss. I want to see you in the, on the next level. I want to yes. see you when all this is done. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are going to give our seed. We are going to have our, our extra oil. We, we don't know whether to take up to June. We don't know, but all I'm sure, oh, if I have extra, I'm going to survive. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Point number five. We are coming to an end. Seclusion will humble you. Hallelujah. You'll be humbled in seclusion. Hallelujah. Amen. God will not let you walk out of it still with arrogance and pride. Right. This is the very reason he took you and led you in it in the first place. Hallelujah. During seclusion time, God works on you to bring out the best product on market than before. Mm. Hallelujah. King Nebuchadnezzar was arrogant. 
but it was in the desert, it was in the wilderness that God dealt with his, with his arrogance. Yeah. He could not speak, he could not worship God and say that he's the Lord of Lords, hallelujah, until he was humbled. God will put you through everything until you're humbled to get to understand that he's a God of God. He's the only one, the giver of life. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Nothing comes before him and nothing goes after him. He is everything. He's the I am. Nothing is added to him and nothing is subtracted to him. Mm, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This is a time for God to prune us. Whew. Do you know how sometimes you sit in a sauna? Hallelujah. And you go in there and you sit. It's very hot. Hallelujah. The temperatures are very high there. Just like this camera before me. Hallelujah. You start feeling the heat. Hallelujah. So if I was a person that sweats, I'll be sweating right now. And you go in the sauna and you're sweating. But that sweat comes with toxics. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So you walk out of there knowing that some toxics have gone away. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are in the sauna right now. Yeah. God is taking out the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's pruning us and he's taking out all the toxics out of us. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. He's taking out the toxins out of what? Of us. Yes. He wants us to come back not the same people. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We have been singing a song that the goodness of God is running after me. Yes. That is goodness of God running after Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God pruning you is his goodness running yes. after you. Yes. Or else he, had left, he would have left you alone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But his goodness, all the hell that has broken loose. Woo. Hallelujah. It is his goodness. Yes. Even in this pandemic, we can still see his goodness. Yes. It yes. is running after us. Hallelujah. Amen. His goodness is running after me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I am going to take this and thank him for it. I am going to worship him because I know it is his goodness that is after me. Yes. Not anything else. He wants me to become the best person. Hallelujah. He has called me to serve. He has Woo. called me for a purpose. Yes. Therefore to fulfill the purpose yes. in excellence he has got to deal Hallelujah. with the inner woman in me. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 So this is what it is called. Lockdown. Instead of pastors crying, the churches are closed. He is dealing with you. Hallelujah. Maybe you are not leading the people. The bishop was teaching us today that as you're leading, you have to be careful to watch out the people you're, you're leading because you gotta know who they are. You gotta know what they are doing. But above all of it all, you have to understand what, what they have to know who you are. Yes. There's gonna be a standard. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 But we have been leading people just like as King Nebuchadnezzar was leading the people, hallelujah, yeah. with arrogance and yet excellence was supposed to be in him. Yeah. So God wanted to deal with him. The only way he was going to deal with him is to isolate him. Amen. So today God is dealing with us. Amen. God is isolating us. Hallelujah. Amen. He's closing doors. There were doors that we had opened. Jesus. God is closing doors. Hallelujah. Amen. God is, and if you walk out of COVID, do not open those doors. Amen. I'm talking to those who have boyfriends and girlfriends. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not married and you've been visiting that boy, that girl every day. Hallelujah. Amen. Fooling around and there are those who are now the shishi. How do you call those, those, those little places people go to, to smoke these pipes thing? How do they call them? Shisha. 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 What is it? Shisha hookah. Hookah. Hallelujah. All the hookah places are what? Are closed. Hallelujah. During COVID, that door has been closed. Why? God does not want you to smoke on that weed anymore. Ah. And once you walk out of it, God is asking you, do not go back to it. Amen. Yes, Lord. Do not open that door again. Hallelujah. Amen. God is saying, do not do what? Don't open that door. Do not open that door again. Yeah. He has closed some doors for a purpose. Hallelujah. And your job is not to open them again. Because if you open them again, you're going to hell. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. There were times when, you know, things can change. The times, and I thank God for COVID. Yeah. 
Because everybody now is preaching about righteousness. There were times when we would stand here and talk about righteousness and people would hate to hear that gospel. People hated to hear about holiness and how to write, to walk upright before God. People did not like that sermon. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you came here and preached that sermon, they were, you know, some people would say, oh, we don't like her because pastor, you know, we don't like that sermon because they are doing wrong things. And because instead of them embracing and saying, what do we do? They were still saying, we don't like that type of preaching. We like Bishop because Bishop is going to prophesy. We are going to get cast. Every time Pastor Barbara shows up, she's going to talk about holiness. Today, yes. you're yearning for that sermon. Yes. Amen. Nobody is prophesying cars right now. Amen. Nobody is prophesying cars. You are wanting to hear the word of God. That is Amen. how we got born again. I was not born again being promised a cars. The God. church where I had the sermon that where I gave my life to God, I never had them telling me that there is riches in the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. They told me if you don't do what God wants you, you're going to hell. Oh. That's how I got born again. Right. I feared hell. They described hell, and the mere fact that they described it that way, I was so terrified, and I said, no more. Even when I did something wrong, I said, no, Lord, I am sorry. I don't want to go to hell. And it was in the 90s, as I started hearing there is riches in the, in, in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That's when I started to hear someone's change. That's when I had said people talking about, yes, there are riches, but that's how I started hearing people. And all it was about, you're going to get a house, you're going to get billions, you're going to get rich, you're going to be this, you're going to be this. And, that, and I'm like, what happened to hell? Are people hearing about hell? Oh, is hell gone and God is replacing riches for hell? But I discovered that hell is still there. Yeah. And God gave me a mandate and said, you're going to talk about my holiness. Yeah. And I want you to put my people right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is not a judgment in someone. It is something to help all of us. Hallelujah. Yeah. To get to heaven. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible tells us after seven years, we are going to go to the last point. Yeah. After seclusion, you are going to another level of your life. Yes. Mind you, you are not the same person now, hallelujah, as you went in. I'm uh, actually assuming that people are not going to be the same as they left. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm assuming that when we come back, we are going to be different people. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to another level. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, declares, but we all with unveiled face, hallelujah, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image. Do you yes. hear that? Yeah. From glory to what? To glory. glory. Just by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Every next level of your life will demand a different version of yourself. Amen. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every next level of your Amen. life will demand a different version of yourself. You. The Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 18, that beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. You are the same person, hallelujah, but in a different version. Hallelujah. He's not replacing you. You're coming back in a different version. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar is coming back out of the wilderness. He came back out of the different. You know, I like when he ends the, the verse. He says, at the same time, my reason, that verse 36, hallelujah. Time, my reason, return to me. And for the glory of my kingdom, that is Daniel chapter 4, verse 36. Uh -huh. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor return to me. Hallelujah. And he says, my counselors, who is our counselor? The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And nobles resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom. An excellent majesty was added to me. This is telling me he went without an excellent spirit. Ah. He went in the wilderness, hallelujah, as a great king, but not with excellent majesty. Mm. So when he came back, the Bible tells me, I was restored to my kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And excellent majesty, hallelujah, yeah. was added to me, which means it was not there before. Ooh, yes, Lord. So as I come out of the lockdown, yeah. there's going to be oh. an excellent majesty added unto me. Hallelujah. There's going to be a different version of Pastor Barbara Kayongo. I'm not going to be the same woman as you see walked in the lockdown. 
when all this is over, a different yes. version of the same woman is coming out. Hallelujah. But this time is going to be excellent. Yes, man. Hallelujah. This is what God is all about. This is what lockdown is all about. God is demanding a different version of you at the level he's taking you to. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's demanding a different version. People are waiting for a different version yeah. of you. People are waiting to see what is going to happen to us after this COVID-19. Oh. Yes, yes. They are waiting to see how are the bishops and pastors and the prophetesses coming out of it. Mm. They are expecting something more. Man, yeah. So if you are going, when we went into COVID, and you not have the faith to make the lamb walk, they are expecting Ooh. us to come out, Thank demanding God. the lamb to walk. Yeah. They are waiting for a different version. They are tired of this Miss Barbara standing here. They are waiting for another version. And I'm promising you, <laughs> a new version of me is coming out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God has been working on me. Yeah. I'm in a pruning in a pruning session. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's pruning me, he's taking off things off me because he's demanding a different version. Hallelujah. If I'm gonna go to another glory, Hallelujah. there gotta be a different version of yeah. me. Yeah. The things that we used to do, yeah. we cannot do them no more. Yeah. His mercy and grace has been there for us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Children of God. Hallelujah. I am ending with a question. Jesus. What version of you am I expecting to see to when we return to church? Hallelujah. Mm. What version are we waiting to see when we return to church? Mm. Hallelujah. Am I seeing the same worshiper without the anointing that flows? Come on. Am I watching? Am I am I expecting? Hallelujah. Yeah. They say man of God, woman of God, messing with the sheep and the flock in the church. Mm. Is, that the way, is that the way you're coming back? Hallelujah. Mm. Is that the way you're coming back to his house? They are demanding, are you coming back a gossiper? Are you coming back a thief stealing from God? What have you learned during this time? Has God worked on you? Give him the access into your life to change it around. There is so much into your life that it has to be of use on this earth. Hallelujah. 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 I have concluded, but now I'm calling you. Hallelujah. Jesus. As the wise virgins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to be wise. I don't want you to miss out. Hallelujah. Yes. The ten virgins, we are all virgins. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are all born again. We are all children of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are all called. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we are all given the same opportunity to serve God at all levels available in his kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. And so, as the ten virgins, they all had the lamps. They all had the invitation uh, cards to go to the wedding. Hallelujah. But the wise took extra oil, knowing that if the groom delays, I'll still make it ah, in the banquet hall. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But those who did not come with extra oil did not understand the seasons. You have to be able to comprehend and discern the season we are in today. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's only, uh, it's only those who are, are wise who are going to survive this COVID-19 season. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, I asked you in the middle of when I was giving the sermon, I'm asking you to get your sacrifice. That's not going to be your tithe. That's not going to be your offering. I want you to be like a wise virgin and say, Lord, if you're a member of Revival Power Ministries or if you want to plant your seed in Revival Power Ministries, do so. The number is online. Hallelujah. 
they, you're going to sow a seed. Hallelujah. If you don't live here and you have your church, I want you to call your pastors. Hallelujah. And say, I'm giving my wise virgin. I'm one of the wise virgins. I'm giving my, my, my seed. Hallelujah. Because that is your extra oil. Because you don't know how long this is going to take. But with you having extra oil, and that is the backup of God. Hallelujah. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the protection of God. But you having that alone. Yes. You are assured that you make it to the banquet hall when we are celebrating and saying that if it were not for God, we wouldn't have made it. That is our ticket, hallelujah. That is our time to go there, hallelujah. So I'm asking everyone, get your, get your time. But I want first of all to pray for that sacrifice, hallelujah. I want to pray for that sacrifice. I want to, to, to know people and say, Basta, here I am, hallelujah. You're going to call, are there the numbers online? Are they there? Hallelujah. Call those numbers. Hallelujah. If it is faster for you to do cash square, do it. If it's faster for you to go online, do it. If it's faster for you to do sell, do it. Whatever means, I don't want you to miss out. I want you to have extra anointing. I want you to have extra protection. I want you to have extra oil. So that if this does not go away tomorrow, you're prepared for it. Hallelujah. And there's no better prepar preparation by sacrificing in the kingdom of God. I'm going to pray for that sacrifice. And I told you to name it the wife virgin sacrifice. Father, I thank you and I bless you. I give you a view and I give you the glory. I bring all those, the children that have been obedient to God. I bring them before you, Lord of oh God, King of glory. And I pray that as they give their sacrifice, Lord, my goal that you fulfill your word as you did it for the virgins, that the groom came in, Lord, and they got into the banquet hall and they sat with the King, Lord of oh God, King of glory. The doors were not locked out on them. I pray that each person that will give this seed, O oh God, and go sacrifice, O oh Father, that the doors of their blessings, the doors of hell, the doors of protection, the doors of favor, the doors of your mercy, the doors of your grace will never be shut before them, Lord. But the Lord has been wide open for them to get in, Lord. Father, bless them, Lord. For you said obedience. Bless your children, oh Father God. Bless us as we give it, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Get ready and give it. And for those who have never given their lives to Christ, this is an opportunity for you to do so. I'm calling on you. There is no, he's the truth, the life, hallelujah, yes. and the light. Life in Christ is the best thing you can ever have. Yes. And if you have never known him, I'm asking you today to surrender to him. Not to me, not to your husband, not to your boyfriend, not to your girlfriend, not to your money, not to anything but to God. Because whatever you ever desire in life is with him. So I want for those who say today I'm giving my life to Christ to repeat this. Dear Father, I thank you that today I have made a decision. The in fact, the best decision I've ever made in my life to give my life to you. I come completely ignorant of how you operate. I don't know how all this is going to turn out, but all I know, I'm walking into my great greatness. I'm walking into the unknown greatness. I'm starting a future with the King of Kings. I pray that your Holy Spirit will guide me. I pray that your blood will sanctify me and your name will become the bread I eat every day with your word. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 So we have come to the close of our service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I ended very early. I was rushing through the someone thinking that we are going to be late. Hallelujah. But we thank God. Hallelujah. So I want you to get ready. Hallelujah. Get ready and give your tithe and give your also. We are going to correct our tithes. Don't forget your tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. And we're going to pray for that too. We are going to pray for that. Hallelujah.
We are waiting for God to do great things in our lives. We are waiting on Him. Hallelujah. Get your tithe, get your offering. Get ready to call. Hallelujah. 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 Let us pray for our offerings and tithers. Father, we thank you for once again on this opportunity you have given us to give back to you. We come with our hearts full of thanksgiving to bring, Lord of Father, our tithers, to bring our offerings, O oh God, to you. And we pray that they may be acceptable before you, Lord. We pray that you may bless the works of our hands and do not let, Lord of Father, the enemy, Lord of Father, God, King of glory, Lord of Father, God, come and control our lives. But we pray that you will rule and reign in our lives and protect us from the evil one. In the mighty name of Jesus, Son of the living God, we pray that as, Lord of Father, God, you're blessing us, that also what we are giving in your kingdom, Lord, will be of blessing into the kingdom of God. We thank you and we bless Bless you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for our team. Hallelujah. Those who can wake up and come here and sacrifice all their time. We want to thank for all those who are online watching. Hallelujah. That always. And actually I wanted to talk about uh, when you know a person who has been changed. Uh, when you come back in a different fashion. And I wanted to talk about it when I was speaking about people who worship God with their lips and hearts. You can tell the difference. Hallelujah. A person that worships God with their heart is not asked even to give. We know when we stand here and we are, we are going to minister and you ask people, can you stand up? We are going to worship. Those people have not come to worship God. Because you are not supposed to be asked to stand before God and worship Him. You're supposed to do it because now you've come with your heart. When they say it's time to worship, you just get up. You're just you're just led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. When they say, when you even know when it's time for giving, they don't call upon you. We prepare what you're going to give. I know that you're going to give. Those are people that worship God with their hearts. Hallelujah. And people, you know, now we are online. Hallelujah. You don't, you're not waiting for a notification to tell you that Pastor Barbara is online or Bishop is online. You're already know that at 8.30 or 9.30 there's going to be somebody who's going to teach. You're already ready for that. Hallelujah. So I'm expecting a new version of people returning. We are all going to be different. We are not going to be asked to give anymore. We are not going to be begged to come for church services and, and pray. Hallelujah. You, We are going to come ourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And also we are asking people to like our Revival Power Ministry page. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can read about or you can read about our services running under, but we have our services every Tuesday online. Hallelujah. Bishop Robert Kayongo, or it will be Bishop Robert Walter, or it will be Bill Papasa, Charles Billion Misho, or it will be me. Be expectant and be excited every Tuesday at 7 p.m. We are here for only one hour. It's not going to take a lot of time. And then on Friday, we are back again with the same service. Hallelujah. But this is more of prayer. Hallelujah. And we start at 8 p.m. So please come. It's the same thing. You never know who's going to show up. So just be excited. Hallelujah. Don't be reminded. Don't wait to be reminded. I want you to put it in your head that on Tuesday, 7 p.m., I have to be online. At 7, at 8 p.m. on Fridays, I have to be online. On Sundays, I have to be online at 9.30 p.m. 9.30 a.m. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. My name's once again, I'm Pastor Barbara Kayongo. I serve under the leadership of Bishop Robert Kayongo here in Venice, California. Hallelujah. We are excited on what God is doing. We are seeing God's grace and mercies. We are so grateful to what God is doing our, in our lives. May God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday. So we are going to repeat the grace as as. as. I was telling you by, I thought the bishop was going to come. But let us end the service, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you have given us to be with you in your presence, O oh God, King of glory. 
We thank you, Lord, O Father, for the food that you have fed us with of the Spirit. We thank you, Lord, O God, King of glory, for this place, Lord, O Father, God, and such a time you have given us, O God, to be able to come and serve in a different and unique way. We pray, Lord, O Father, God, as we go through the whole entire week, that, Father, God, King of glory, your presence will continue to be with us, that will be hidden under your presence, will be hidden under the place that is holy, will be hidden in the blood of Jesus, where no enemy can get to us, O God. We pray, Lord, O Father, God, King of glory, that the mysteries in the blood of Jesus will be at work in our lives throughout the whole entire week and throughout the whole entire month, O God. We pray, Lord, O Father, God, that you may bless us, you may give us the time to appreciate, Lord, O Father, this opportunity to appreciate the times we are in, Lord, O God, and that we may do that which we are supposed to do, that we may come out of this with a different version of who we are. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless God. We thank God for thank God for the woman of God that has delivered the word to us and uh, give all the glory to God. All we just need to do is to be in alignment and to listen to what God has said. We thank God for Bishop Roberts who gave us the first service. May the Lord completely bless you. As the word of God has been, let us accept and receive the word and our lives will never be the same again. If there is anybody that is sick and I just felt it in my spirit and you may need a prayer, let's just conclude with that. Father, in the name of Jesus, if any be sick in the hospital, in their houses or wherever you are watching us, we pray in the name of Jesus that your hand of power will reach out and deliver those that are sick and bound. If you're in your living room and you've been struggling with a situation, we pray in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of God come in there and deliver you and set you free. We believe God to do exceedingly abundantly above because you have been in the presence of God. The word of God declares that because of the word that you have heard, you have already been delivered. I pray that the delivering hand of God will deliver you from that place where you have been driven. And like Nebuchadnezzar, that the Lord will bring restoration at the end of the lockdown, that your life will be excellent. An excellent version of you is coming out in Jesus' name. We thank you for all of you that are supporting us in one way or the other, and that are keeping the work of God going with your tithes, with your offerings, and in any way. May the Lord bless you. We are supporting our community with, uh, you know, as they go through the COVID-19 season. And we are doing everything that we can uh, to donate and to be of help in order to push the kingdom of God forward. May the Lord bless you. Wait for you on Tuesday in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor Barbara. Thank you, Bishop Walter. God bless you.